Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my new video. In this video, I'm gonna speak in English because I want to, everybody to understand me. Uh, I will give some information about Turkmen language, about its history and stuff like that. Bu videoda uh, İngilizce konuş, konuşacağım çünkü herkesin anlamasını istiyorum. Türkmen dil hakkında biraz uh, bilgiler vereceğim. O yüzden İngilizce konuşacağım. Bu videoda İngilizce gülleme karar verdim. E, Feve abi e, İngilizce gülleme sen hemen düşünür. E, Türk mendili bu arada mağlumat verecek. Böyle en şey İngilizce gülleme sen kovu olur deyip düşündüm. Bu kadar Okay, let's go. I'm going to talk about Turkmen language, about its history, about uh, its structure, uh, about some grammatical cases and stuff like that. Okay, let's go. The Turkmen language belongs to the greater family of the Turkic languages. The Turkic languages, together with the Mongolian and Manchu Tungus languages, form the Ural Altaic language group. Some experts also consider Japanese and Korean part of this phylum or family, although evidence of this is uh, debated. Specifically, Turkmen is a Turkic language of the southwestern branch, which is called Oguz group, along with Turkish and Azerbaijani. Among the all Oguz languages, Turkmen is rather linguistically conservative, but it shows some influences from Persian and Arabic and Russian. Uh, dialects of the northern and eastern Turkmenistan in particular show some convergence with Uzbek language. Among all the Turkic languages, there are similar grammatical structures, similar phonetics, some shared vocabulary, and high mutual intelligibility. Uh, Turkmen is agglutinative language. Uh, which means its grammatical functions are indicated by adding various suffixes to fix its stems. For example, uh, the word then, it means you. Uh, then, you. Without you, then, th. Uh, the sis suffix is added. Then, uh, The form of being without you. Then, uh, then. From from the form of being without you, kind of like that. So, uh, the suffixes are added to the root word. It means a uh, agglutinative language. In general, uh, Turkmen word order is like subject, object, verb, like in all Turkic languages. In some ways, Turkmen is an easy language to learn. Unlike Russian or Spanish, Turkmen has no genders. For example, uh, the subject, object, verb. It's difficult for European speakers, especially Indo-European speakers, because uh, when you say in English, I go to school, right? Uh, I go to school, like subject, verb, object. But in Turkmen, men mektebe giderin, men mektebe bararın. The verb is at the end, so it's a little bit confusing for Indo-European speakers or others. And in Turkmen language we have a uh, vowel harmony like in all Turkic languages except Uzbek language. Uh, what is vowel harmony? Vowel harmony is one of a very interesting feature of Turkmen is that all vowels can be divided into two groups the front vowels and the back vowels. Uh, front vowels are pronounced higher in the throat and are more nasal while back vowels are pronounced lower in the throat and are more guttural. Front vowels are these A, Ö, Ü, I, E. Back vowels A, O, U, Ü. For example, here in, you can see that in, for example, eşik means uh, cloth. Eşiklerimiz, our clothes, the, all vowels are uh, front vowels, as you see. For example, uh, at the lower, the word talib, it mean, talib, it means student, talib larimud. All vowels are uh, back vowels. So, okuchi, okuchi larimud. As you can see, all vowels are back vowels. It's called vowel harmony. Okay, let's talk about a little history about Turkmen language, uh, how it where it began, when they come to Central Asia, and things like that. Uh, the entrance of Turkic speaking groups into the southwestern region of Central Asia by the 5th and 6th centuries gradually changed the area from Persian speaking to Turkic speaking. 
The decisive influx came when August tribes migrated into the area between the Ural Mountains and the Aral Sea around 8th and 9th centuries. During this same period, the term Turkmen was first used to refer to these people. The ethnonym Turkmen can be dated back to the late 10th century, though its etymology remains unsettled. Credible suggestions include pure Turk uh, or resembling a Turk, and it was first applied to August groups that accept Islam, like uh, uh, Turk plus Iman, like Turkiman, Turkman. So uh, the it's debatable, it's, uh, it's unsettled. The oldest monuments of Turkic languages inscribed on stones and datable uh, to the early 8th century uh, were discovered in the late 19th century in southern Siberia around the Yenisei River and in the northern Mongolia near the capital of Urga, modern Ulaanbaatar, uh, deciphered in 1893 by the Danish scholar William Thompson. They provide valuable insights into the history of Central Asia around the 7th century. These records of the Turk dynasty include texts found at Kosha Tsaidam uh, on the Orhan River, as well as several Chinese texts. These texts throw light on the nomadic culture of the tribal empire controlled by the Turk dynasty, including shamanism, the calendar, customs and social structure. Uh, the Turkic languages uh, have some branches, several, let's see what they are. The first one is Oğuz, also known as Southern or Southwestern Turkic includes the Turkish language uh, or Old Ottoman language, the mo most widely used Turkic language spoken in Turkey and the Balkan Peninsula, uh, Azeri spoken in Azerbaijan and Northwestern Iran and uh, Turkmen, we are talking about this language right now, which is my native language, spoken in Turkmenistan and other parts of Central Asia. The second branch is Kıpçak or Western Turkey includes Kazakh and Kyrgyz languages spoken in Central Asia, Tatar spoken around the middle of Volga and in Turkey, the Balkans, Central Asia and China, Bashkort or Bashkir language which is very similar to Tatar. The third one or Eastern Turkey includes Uzbek spoken in Uzbekistan and other parts of Central Asia and Uyghur spoken in Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region of China and parts of Central Asia. Uh, and the north, northern Turkic, also known as Eastern Hunnic, consists of a number of languages spoken in Siberia, such as Yakut and Altai and Hakas languages. And the fifth one is in a single language branch consisting of Chuvash language, spoken along the middle Volga River. Chuvash language, actually, I, I made a video about this, the old one. Uh, when the Proto Altaic, Proto Turkic, Sorry, Proto-Turkic, uh, when they, they divide to two, Proto-Turkic and Proto-Bulgar. Uh, Chuvash comes from the Proto-Bulgar language. That's why it's so different from common Turkic. Okay, uh, let's talk about the Turkmen alphabet. It's, we have 30 letters, 21 consonants and 9 vowels. Let's go. D as in dog. F, F, F as in far. J as in jam, K as in kin, L as in low, M as in man, N as in noun, P as in park, T as in tall. The following letters are pronounced differently from their English equivalents. Often the pronunciation changes if the letter at the beginning of a word or sentence. For example, B. B as in bad, at the beginning of a verb, B, within words similar to W or V, G, as in get, at the beginning of a verb, within words pronounced more gutturally from the back of the throat like G, which is in Turkish uh, there's a G with a hat, and we, we have that sound, but on, in our alphabet we don't have it, for example, at the beginning we pronounce it was G, but for example, a uh, mountain, da, it's more guttural, da. We, we have the sound, but uh, we don't have the letter. But we know where to pronounce it. And h, h as in that hat, hat. Sometimes, sometimes it's uh, h, sometimes h. It depends on the word. 
and on the dialect. R, as in rat, but with a trill. Uh, s, like th, as in think. And w, as in west. In words adopted from Russian, v, as in very. And z, th, like then. In words adopted from Russian, it's z, like zip. In Turkmen, s and z, uh, we use it with a lisp, like officially languages like that. But in some areas, they use normal s, z. For example, uh, like hi, salam. But some places, uh, the people say salam. Or for example, you, sen. Some northern and eastern dialects, they say sen. Lastly, there are some consonants that are not familiar to English speakers. Like ch, like in Turkish, like chen, uh, with a tail, and z, a soft, c, as in pleasure, and n, nasal, and g, as in ring, sh, as in short, y, with a hat, as in yes. Okay, uh, let's talk about the vowels. Our vowels are very interesting because we have long and short vowels which is still preserved in Turkmen language because these long and short vowels were in all Gokter times. Uh, in these days, Turkic uh, language in our modern Turkic languages, in, only in Turkmen and Yakut and some Kyrgyz words, we have that. But none of others they don't have. Like A. Short A as in father. Long A as in bar. Like when you say open the uh, verb open ach ach uh, it's short a uh, when you say i'm hungry like hungry men ach ach it's long a e short e as in met or dead and a a is in like cat and bat for example adik boots adam step bash it's five e short e as in in and long e as in peace. For example, uh, when you say pil, it means elephant. And when you say peel, it means shovel. That's the difference between short and long e. O as in hall. Like uh, short o is like ot. It's, it means plant, ot. And ot, it means fire. Interesting. E uh, as in early. Again, short and long. For example, if you say "good," it means "I." When you say "good," it means uh, "ember." After five, "u" as a moon. Again, uh, there is short and long "u." For example, "ulu" in in the word "ulu" it means big. It's short "u," and when you say "un," it's flower. It's uh, long "u." "u." U is short, roughly equivalent to U in Bu, but with pursed lips, like long pronouns with the same, but with longer duration. Uh, in English, there is no U and U, uh, but in Turkish there are. Like when you say U, uh, you can purse your lips like U. Uh. When you say U, uh, and when you pronounce U, uh, you will purse your lips, and it will come out like U. Uh. Ooh. And, and finally, uh, the vowel U, like short one, roughly equivalent to U uh, as in run, long E as in peace, but not exactly, but further back in the throat. U is in like in Turkish, there's U, uh, but Turkmen U is like uh, more like Russian U. Uh. For example, when you say a th, when you say a th, it's hot, but when you say U. It's uh, smell or, or odor. Uh, the, uh, in a th, it's short, ui, and when you say ui, it's long, ui. Okay, let's talk about the grammatical case of Turkmen. We have six of them. The first one, nominative uh, and genitive, dative, accusative, locative, and ablative. Uh, it depends on the suffixes, depends on the vowel endings. And consonant endings. For as you can see here, for example, Pahta it means cotton. And the second word is Goptepe, the town name. 
uh, genitive is the suffix is like nung ning nung nung pakta nung gok de pa nung the dative is a a or na ne pakta gok de pa accusative is ni ni pakta ni gok de pa ni locative is da de or nda nde pakta de gok de pa de the ablative is dan den or ndan nden pakta dan gok de pa de the examples about consonant endings uh, look at this qazan it means part uh, the nominative kasher it's carrot the genitive qazanan kasherin dative qazana kashira accusative qazani kashri locative qazanda kashirdi ablative qazandan kashirdan and finally, I want to talk about uh, some fun facts and beautiful places, beautiful uh, things about Turkmenistan and their culture and Turkmen language, everything. Okay, let's go. In Turkmenistan, there is a desert called Karakum, one of the biggest deserts in the world. Its area is 350,000 kilometers square. And, and we have a really beautiful horse, which is called Akhalteke. Akhalteke is a Turkmen horse breed. They have a reputation for speed and endurance, intelligence and distinctive metallic sheen. The shiny coat of the breed led to their nickname Golden Horses. And of course, our capital is Ashgabat, the white beautiful city. Despite what's been said about our Ashgabat and countries, it's a really beautiful country. It's the white marbles, monuments, white streets, uh, really beautiful city and of course we have the door to hell there was a gas created also known as the door to hell or gates of hell it is a natural gas field collapsed into a cavern located in Derveze. geologists intentionally set it on fire to prevent the spread of methane gas and it is thought to have been burning continuously since 1971 and these are turkmen's traditional, national, beautiful dresses and clothes. They are really beautiful and it means a lot to me. And of course, uh, the most famous things about Turkmenistan is Turkmen carpets, the rocks. Uh, there are many science patterns in these uh, carpets because every science and patterns means something. Every tribe has their own patterns and signs. Even on our flag there are five patterns which means five big clans, tribes and regions of Turkmenistan. And of course the historic places like old Kanurganj city which was a big city in Khwarezmian dynasty and after that uh, it was a big city in Timur empire and Khiva empire and of course, uh, the biggest city of Seljuk Empire, it was Mare. Old name is Merv, in 11th century capital of Seljuks. Near to Ashgabat city, there is a old Parthian Empire city called Nisa. It was uh, before common era, like 170 uh, and 138. It was a big city in Parthian Empire. It's near to Ashgabat city. And we have beautiful camels too, of course. Akhtumulu was Turkmen spiritual leader and philosophical poet who made great efforts to secure independence and autonomy for his people in 18th century. Everybody loves Akhtumulu Prava because he was the greatest poet of Turkmen history. And he wanted always, he wanted to unite all Turkmen tribes, clans together. And I love his poems, everybody loves him, he's the greatest, he's awesome. And I will end this video with his beautiful verse about Turkmen's. In one verse, he describes the area of Turkmenistan, the geography, the map. In one verse, it's beautiful. Jehun bilen bahar kadar arafi, çöl üstünde öthür yeli Türkmenim. Gülü gülçesi qara gözüm qarafi, qara dağdan iner fiili Türkmenim. It's beautiful, magical. I hope you liked this video about Turkmen language. Further, I will do some videos more about language structures, the history, everything. It was just this video was just a brief history and 
uh, information about Turkmen language than Turkmen's. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you like it, please subscribe to my channel and you see you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. I will write it down on the description in this video. So take care. Love you. Bye.